So this question is a word problem. So I'm going to use the strategy translate word problem in order to solve it. And all that means is as I read the question, I'm going to write down any quantitative information as I go and then use that information that I've written down as uh, the info that I use to answer the question, right? So I'm not reading the entire thing through and trying to remember the information or having to go back and reread it multiple times. I'm just going to write the stuff down as I see it. So the very first sentence here says, a study conducted by a mobile phone company found that the average battery life of a random sample of its phones is 4.6 hours with an associated margin of error of 0 0.5 hours. So I have 4.6 plus or minus 0 0.5. So hopefully that looks familiar to you, right? A margin of error could be on to the upside or the downside. Um, so we're just saying this 4.6 number is what we is what they calculated. However, most phones are kind of in this range of 4.1 to 5.1, okay? The study was then repeated with a much larger sample size. Okay, so first of all, the larger sample size, the larger the sample size that you use, the more likely it is that you're finding the real value, right? So when I say 4.6 is an average, but I'm telling you that most phones were between 4.1 and 5.1, it, it tells me that that range is a little bit too big in order for it to be the real, in order for this 4.6 to be the real average, right? Now, it could be the real average, we don't know, but I'm not certain unless I use a much larger sample size. And now if that much larger sample size still says 4.6, I begin to trust it a little bit more, but my trust also is associated with my margin of error. That 0.5 should get smaller as our sample size gets larger. So let's keep reading. That's just a little bit of information on how to even deal with this idea of sample size and margin of error. So the study was then repeated with a much larger sample size with the mean and margin of error of the new sample being calculated in the same way as the original study. Which of the following is most likely true? So I kind of just gave you a sense of what we would expect to happen with a larger sample size. So let's check all these answers choices out. So choice A says the margin of error from the new study is larger than the margin of error from the original study. I'm gonna cross that out because you should not and you will not have a larger margin of error by having a larger sample size. That just does not happen. Choice B, the margin of error from the new study is smaller than the margin of error from the original study. That is what we expect, so I like choice B, but let's give the other options a chance here as well. Choice C, the mean from the new study is larger than the mean from the original study. Now, that could be true. I don't know if it's true or not. Um, there really isn't anything from the word problem that tells me that the mean was off. So I kind of still like B being a better answer than C in this case, so I'm gonna cross C out. Choice D, the mean from the new study is smaller. So yeah, there's nothing about the new study that tells me the mean should be different, right? The mean will most likely be the same because I'm assuming they're talking about, you know, there is, you know, this mobile phone company is looking at their their phones, so looking at the exact same phones just over a larger sample size, we should really just see the margin of error decrease, right? So if I'm if I'm checking out a hundred phones versus a million phones, right, that margin of error should get smaller. So choice B is the best answer here. This ends up being really more like a knowledge question, right, which is just testing, do you understand what margin of error means? Do you understand how margin of error relates to sample size? And the idea or the knowledge here is that as your sample size increases, your margin of error should decrease. Right, so if you remember that connection, then this question becomes fairly simple.